Concord is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. Alright, so we're on the record. Let's have Ms. Eugene and Ms. George tell the record they're here. <laughs> Good morning, Brenda Eugene on behalf of the State Attorney's Office. Letitia George on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. All right, and we have uh, a couple privates. I don't know who was here first. Um, that you no. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You got the move ups? Sorry, hang on, y'all. So, oh, is this uh, La Rochelle? Okay. <clears throat> Arlene, what am I supposed to say? Yeah, I wanted it at 100, like I said. Okay. Uh, look, they brought you back right. for... Jesus. All right, I'm on the record, so I'm going to watch what I say. Let's do it. Um, apparently, somebody couldn't understand that, that, that the probable cause affidavit said that the bond for count two should be 150, and I said 100. Even if I was wrong, I said 100. Therefore, it's 100. Is that all I got to do? That's it. All right. Sorry to waste your time. Okay, so my bond set at one hundred dollars. Yeah. On the on count two. I mean, you're still oh, the at second account was a hundred. Yeah. Uh, I forget 5, what, first one remains. It's five k. Yeah. Okay. All right. You got so, that cleared up? I was never unclear, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. Is this Malia? Okay, and Ms. Malia, you didn't join us yesterday. Um, Ms. George, are we resolving? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the offer from the state is an adjudication of guilt, credit time served, no return to the Circle K located at 6250 West Colonial Drive. Ms. Malia uh, would like to accept the state's offer and enter a plea of no contest. Sure. Um, okay, so you need that. Do you want to just hang on to these? I made, I made notes. I made notes on everything, so. All right. Uh, Ms. Malia, can you face me and raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm everything you say today should be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? All right, you can put your hand down. Ms. Malia, I am told by your attorney that you wish to enter a plea and accept the state's offer of an adjudication of guilt, credit time served. Ms. Davis, are we doing two days on this one? Or? Yes, she has two. Two days, okay. Uh, credit time served, uh, you'd have your court costs, and you cannot return to the Circle K at 6250 West Colonial Drive. Is that what you understood you were agreeing to? Yes, sir. All right. Ma'am, I've been handed a plea form. There is a signature on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it from over there, but is that your signature, or do you recall signing this? My signature. Fantastic. Did you read the form? Ma'am, did you read this form? Or at least go over it with Ms. Uh, George? Yes, I did. I read the whole thing, sir. Oh, fantastic. My signature, that's my, my signature, Laura Lee Malia. All right, fantastic. And so you, because you read and understood this, uh, you do realize this is a criminal matter. You have every right to go to trial if you choose. However, because you're going to enter this plea today, we're not going to have a trial. The case is over. And so you are giving up that right. Do you realize you're waiving your right to a trial? Yes, I do. Are you satisfied with the assistance of your lawyer? Yes, I am. Are you currently on probation for any other matter? No. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? Nothing. Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? No. And finally... Whether it applies to you or not, do you understand the idea that if you are not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea to a criminal charge would subject you to deportation? Do you understand that concept? Yes, I do. I'm a U.S. citizen. That's fine. I just need to know if you get the idea. I'm from New York, Long Island. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to find that you please freely and voluntarily entered. You've knowingly and willingly waived your right to have a trial, and you've had assistance of counsel with whom you say you're satisfied. Is she living in Fort Pierce? 
She's um, currently homeless, Your Honor. So I'll just transient. Have... Yes, Your Honor. All right. Are you going to be asking for civil judgment? Yes, Your Honor. All right. All right, uh, Ms. Malia, I assume you're entering a plea of no contest, meaning you just want to resolve this, not contest it. Is that right? Yes. Uh, really one thing you want. I, I know that uh, for no reason at all, I did nothing at that circle, okay? When I first moved to Florida, all I did one day was go in to get hot chocolate, and the black woman, excuse me, All right, well, hang on a second. Do you, are you sure you want to uh, resolve the case this way, or would you rather right, go I'm to trial? I'm going to trial because I'm never going back there again. I'm not going to waste my breath and go into some stupid. All right, so this is what you want to do with the case. You want to accept the offer and be done today? Yes. All right. Uh, I'll accept your plea of no contest. Uh, I'll adjudicate you guilty of uh, trespass. Uh, order you to serve two days in the Orange County Jail. I'll give you credit for the two days you've already done. She's to be released as to this case. Um, I will order that she pay her court costs, cost of prosecution, public defender lien, in the amount of $323. I will reduce that to a civil judgment. Ma'am, what that means is your paperwork is going to say you owe Orange County $323. However, there's no way they can force you to pay it, and they cannot keep you from driving or voting. Okay? If you want to pay it someday out of the goodness of your heart, you're more than welcome to. But yes. they can't make you. All right. Um, also, for the next year, you may not return to the Circle K at 6250 West Colonial Drive in Orlando, Florida. Oh, you weren't talking to me. Okay. All right, uh, ma'am, do you have any questions about the plea you entered? No. If you wish to appeal that sentence, you have to do it in writing in 30 days. Uh, if you cannot afford an attorney for the appeal, one will be appointed for you, okay? Okay, thank you, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. All right, good luck to you. Oh, do I? Yeah, Adam Reese is supposed to show up. Jesus. Wait a minute. Come on, I'll seal the jail. I don't want that. Oh, uh, recents. Do we need to turn Welcome to an Econo meeting. You are entering the meeting now. We need to turn that TV on, don't we? Or we got a problem? Oh no, I know, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle her. But apparently, we have a private waiting on the link. So I just want to. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, who's your client? Uh, this is Andre Smith. It's on the felony DV list. Yeah. Uh, and Chelsea Simmons, for the record. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. What was your name? Chelsea Simmons. Oh, all right. Is this Andra Smith? It's. How did you say it? Andra. Andra. I'm sorry. Andra Allen Smith. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Ms. Davis. Uh, my note says he qualifies for PTR. He does, Your Honor. Okay. Um, so. Is, would you like him to be released on PTR? Uh, Your Honor, may I have one moment? Yeah, and do we have any witnesses here on Smith? I guess not. I didn't do that. Your Honor, the, our only um, hesitation on PTR is that Mr. Smith um, has recently started his own business, and so the check-ins may prevent an issue for him working. Um, we would ask the court for the lowest bond possible, since he is low on funds, having just started this business. Um, I don't know if the court would consider a thousand on the felony um, and one hundred on the ancillary. Counts no, the court would consider 3500 on the um, felony battery by strangulation, 1000 on false imprisonment, which could be PBL if they had charged it under 787.01 instead of 02. Um, but uh, 1K and 100 on the conspiracy to commit battery, that was an interesting one. You hit him. No, you hit him. <laughs> you aren't on my paperwork. It just says battery. This says conspiracy to me. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I'll do 35 on the strangulation, 1,000 on the false imprisonment, which actually I think it should be the other way around, the higher one on the whatever, and 100 on the conspiracy to commit battery. Or he can be released on PTR. You don't have to post a bond. I'm sure your attorney just told you, Ms. Simmons told you that, but... <laughs> 
You don't have to post a bond, but you have to abide by their rules. Frankly, I prefer EBM PTR because you would be uh, somewhat supervised. Um, in, in any event, no matter how you are released, you're going to have zero contact whatsoever with the victim. You're going to res uh, reside in separate residences. You're going to have no weapons or firearms. I don't think there was any alcohol or anything involved in this. So I won't. Governor, Mr. Smith would um, prefer the PTR in that case um, since that bond I don't think we'll be able to afford. Um, as far as the um, maintain separate residence, I am under the impression that the victim has moved out, and um, so he will maintain a separate residence, but I want to make sure he's able to go back to his home. Oh, yeah. He can, yeah. He can return one time under the escort of law enforcement to retrieve belongings, yes. No, I mean, if he can go back and reside there because she, she has left and gone with, to live with family. Oh, well, um, then Ms. Davis, can PTR yeah, can confirm that? A, yeah, can you just do a maintain separate residence one time return until we confirm with the victim? So... We'll just have it, like I already said, maintain separate residence, may return one time. Once PTR is confirmed that the alleged victim is living somewhere else, sir, then uh, I have no objection to you moving back. No. Okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Good luck to you. Do you want to make straight PTR instead of bond or? Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Oh, I guess. I don't know. You guys know about that. I don't know about that. Um, okay. So the link is up. I don't see anybody on it. So are they emailing you saying they're waiting? Well, tell them what's up. It might be like Mr. Yates. Remember, he had to go in and change his microphone and his camera the other day. But we're going. Are you guys uh, bringing Mr. Mead's client? Oh, OK. And. Mr. Mead, what's your client's name? Murphy Allridge. Allridge? Allridge. With an A? Yeah, it's a little confusing because apparently he's on nobody's list. It's well, it's that could be session. an issue. Allridge. Allridge. It's an out of county. It's got some of Oh, out of county? So that'd be in, in the back, right? Because the out of counties were. Oh, here we go. Good news is that the Allen counties are together. Allridge, oh, I got it. <sighs> Why didn't I put any notes on this? I, I'm assuming if the out of county warrants had bonds, I would have noted that for myself. I think, I think there are bonds on the out of county warrants. Well, I didn't. All right. See, by Friday, I'm going to have this whole system down. <laughs> my last day when I'm done. But when I come back, we'll be good. So I didn't bring my uh, Surface Pro in here. I think if if I looked at the outer kind of warrants and there were bonds, I would have noted it. But can somebody check for me? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, um, oh wait. I got it right here. Oh, there are bonds. Oh, uh, 2028888. Is that it? Yeah, you're right. I apologize, sir. Um, Have you ever known me to be wrong? <laughs> really? Right. You want to go down that road? Uh, all right. So I'm going to stay them uh, because apparently a judge in Seminole County decided he wanted those. So you have a you have twenty thousand on count one and two, eight thousand on counts three, four, and five. Is that it? I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, you know, one of the things I was curious about is which preceded which. So the Orange County case is a 21 case. Oh, and the Seminoles a 22. So I guess he was out already. Okay. All right. Um, well, I mean, because it's sufficiently related, I'm intending to revoke and term on, uh, I mean, revoke and term, revoke his uh, bond on the Orange County case, 2021 CF uh, 4490AO. Um, Mr. Mead, do you wish to be heard? Well, I, if he was to um, 
his R O R his O R R O R on that one. On well, the, he may he may on have the, been uh, once. Orange County case. Uh, no, it says cash bond. Yeah, two of his bonds are still active, and he was R O R on the other count. Wait a minute, he was he posted a cash bond and then was R O R. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it showed in clerk of court, clerk of court, but his bonds are still active on his case, so he's Your technically still out on bond. Your Honor, when he was arrested, there were ten offenses. Uh, the state only filed on two. Um, it was promoting sexual performance of a child and sexual cyber harassment, whereas before it was. No, I understand what I'm, I'm confused because there apparently there was a cash bond. Mr. Mead says no, or I don't know if it was Mr. Mead or the client says he was ROR'd. But was he ROR'd on a couple counts and posted a cash bond on others? Usually that's what what is he Miss Davis is saying is bonds are still active. Yeah, wouldn't it be active on those that he Well I know I, somebody's telling me he was ROR'd. On the 21 case, I don't know. You guys act like I do this every day and I know what I'm talking about. I don't. Well, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry, it does not help. Um, well, Mr. Mead, I, I'm, I mean, the out of county warrant. Let's see, what information do I have on that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think there, I mean, there's similar charges. I mean, in, the, in I think the Seminole County ones are actual L&L battery. And this is possession of, oh, no, no, promotion of sexual performance, sexual cyber harassment. He's not doing anything on, on this one. This is, he's alleged to have sent photos. On which one are we talking about? The Orange County case. Well, okay, but I'm assuming they were. Your Honor? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the order on defendant's motion for release ROR as to uncharged offenses. So as I was stating, it was because the state only charged two offenses out of the ten, so everything else he was released ROR. It does look like there's two cash bonds of 2000 Okay, so basically somebody, probably Mr. Mead, said, hey, you didn't charge these, and we ROR them on those. And the judge said, yeah. But the ones they did file on, oh, it was Ms. Bone. Ones they did file on um, is what he posted cash bonds on, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I am going to revoke his bond on the two that are filed in Orange County. Um, you're free to seek redress of that decision with the judge on that case. Um, but given the allegations in the new case, I think... I think it's reasonable uh, to revoke the bonds. Uh, I, I can do it over your objection if you would like to object on the record. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm for the whatever whatever counts remain standing on the 21. Let's just be clear. I'm going to revoke his uh, bond, um, sir. Uh, you you can speak with Mr. Mead about how you want to address that, but you'll have to address changing what I just ordered with the judge on the case. Okay? All right. Okay, so we'll stay the bonds on the out of county, revoke on the 21, or on the Orange County case. Oh, I'm supposed to say all these case numbers on the record, aren't I? So our case is 2021-CF4490-AO, and I don't know what the Seminole County case is. All right, sir, good luck to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Mead, can you approach briefly? Certainly.
All right. So. Oh, you want to you want to do the attorneys waiting by phone? That's fine. I don't care. OK, well, this is this is all I know how to do. It's on. It's up. We had Mr. Yates on here. We've had the. Can he hear us? Oh, he can hear us. Well, then my guess, it must be some on his end or her end. OK, well, tell them to turn on their microphone and their camera. See, the problem is I can't see any information about who's waiting in here. Like I, in my courtroom, it tells me who's on, who's muted, et cetera, et cetera. My guess is it's it's Adam Reese. Is it Adam Reese? It's Reese. Uh, he's appearing on Streeter. Streeter. I don't know if it is Reese, though, so I'm not suggesting we grab that. You are the only participant. Thank you. I don't know who that lady is, but she seems a little angry, doesn't she? We're going to find out. Hello? Hello there. This is Adam Reese. This is Judge Johnson. Yes. Good morning. That's How are nice. you? You know, I can see you guys, or at least I could a minute ago. I was re logging in again. Well, we're, yeah, we, the, the <laughs> link is on here. Oh, he bonded. Uh, they don't have him because he posted his bond. Well, he should have because there was no reason to hold him, but... Well, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, we don't need to argue. <laughs> no, no, no. I guess it's, it's kind of funny that I've been stressing out about this. I was thinking he ought to just go bond out. I don't know what his problem is. Well, apparently he saw the wisdom of your advice. Yeah, well, I guess it was just sent to him uh, telepathically. Anyhow, <laughs> nice hearing your voice, and I can see you guys. Um, oh, you can. Uh, so you can see what? I can you know what? I'm not even going to get involved. So, yeah, because this is this is odd that you can see us and hear us, but we can't. It's not coming the other way around. Correct. Correct. All right. All right. Next case. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing and sort of seeing you guys. All right. See ya. Bye bye. Oh boy. You are the only participant. What is she mad about? All right, Ms. Boucher? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, oh, uh, let me make the announcement that pursuant to the current administrative order, I'm going, I'm provisionally appointing the public defender to represent every case on every defendant. I did res uh, review all the PC affidavits. I did find PC. The only one I have a question about is the last one on session two. So we'll address that later. All right. Uh, Ms. Davis, um, it's she said this. The my notes say does not qualify for PTR, but she was not interviewed. For Brooke, yes, she qualifies, Your Honor. Oh, she does. Mm -hmm. All right, Your Honor. Understanding that chances are you're just going to release her a pretrial release. If you read the affidavit, this could be much more serious offense. Oh, I know. Offense. I know. She so was I would... stabby. She was kind of stabby. And breaking into an, a, a residence as well, Your Honor. So, um, well, I was gonna either way, bonds or PTR. She's, it's a zero contact, separate residence, no firearms, no weapons, et cetera. What, what, what conditions are you seeking? It, it wasn't so much the conditions, Your Honor, but because I believe it's something more serious is going to be charged, I was going to ask for bond in conjunction with PTR. 
I mean, the, th the reason I like PTR on DV cases is um, even, well, this is the ex-girlfriend apparently, but um, is because at least they have some supervision. Yes, I'm I mean, not if they just pay a bond, they're out. No, you know, I'm not disagreeing to pre pretrial release. I know, you want a bond too? Uh, Only because it's going to, I believe it's going to be something more serious in the future, mm -hmm. Your Honor. Well, I understand, but she's going to be supervised. Um, I, I'm just, I'm wondering what the imposition of a monetary bond in addition gets us. Um, she's more invested? Yes. Mm. No, I'm going to ask for straight pretrial release. I don't see um, a history here, and she will be monitored by pretrial release. I think that would be sufficient to ensure her appearance in court. Your Honor. I mean, I, I'd be, I'd be tempted to have her screen for mental health, but no, I'm not going to do that. All right, Ms. Eugene, I do, I appreciate your position. I do. I, I think, um, and I understand why you're asking for it, um, to uh, sort of up the seriousness in the defendant's mind, maybe. Yes. I, I understand. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, once again, uh, Bail and bond is not to be punitive. It's to be ensure the appearance, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I, I'm going to decline to uh, add a bond. Um, I mean, I, you have a choice. Uh, I would grant you a $3,500 bond on the ag bat with deadly weapon and 500 on the assault. Your other alternative is I'm told that you qualify for pretrial lease, and that, I don't know if anybody's talked to you about what that is. You don't have to post a bond, but you do have to be supervised while your case is pending. You have to check in with their office. Um, you will not, uh, in, in either event, you are to have zero contact with uh, either, well, I guess, are we calling the, the other female a victim, or I don't know. No contact with anybody involved in this case whatsoever. You're to possess no weapons, no firearms. I didn't get the impression that there were drugs or alcohol involved here, so. And you maintain separate residence under either scenario. So, does she have a preference? Pretrial release, Your Honor. Okay. All right, and Ms. Boucher, I, I think the point that uh, the, st the state attorney is attempting to impress upon the court and also you is that, you know, under these facts, they could have charged, well, I don't know, if you, could you go attempted murder? I don't know. I would have gone with bird dwelling with an assault or battery there. Oh, that's punishable by life, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. So, I mean, there's the serious things that could result from the allegations of the things you did. So, this is this is a serious case. Um, so, I, I hopefully uh, you've had some time to reflect, and you understand the seriousness. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But. Um, all right, so I'll give her PTR under those conditions. Does she have to be interviewed before she leaves, or is no? Yeah, she's already been. Interviewed. Oh, already been done. Okay. Uh, is this uh, Ho is it Hodge Donovan? Yes, sir. Good morning. All right. Um, quick question. It it seemed like from the affidavit that you and the alleged victim live, is it the same complex but different apartments? No, we don't live together. Well, I understand that. Oh. You have an, you have an apartment at 5400 Lake, or is, it says apartment 909. Is that a house? Is it an apartment? An apartment. Okay, and does the alleged victim live in the same complex? No. Okay, because it seemed kind of like she did, but. All right, well, that's fine. Um, so I'm going to order that you are given a bond of $3,500 on the egg, egg bat on a pregnant person, 
3,500 on the uh, domestic battery by strangulation, 100 on the false imprisonment, 100 on the battery. And uh, you are to have no contact whatsoever with the victim, maintain separate residences, no weapons, no firearms. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Murphy. Murphy? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Murphy, um, I will grant you a $3,500 bond on the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, a $1,000 bond on the felony battery. Uh, you have no contact with the uh, alleged victim in the case. You possess no weapons, no firearms. You maintain separate residence. Your Honor, what's the case number, please? Oh, I keep forgetting to say case number. Um, and you want me doing that on every case, right? All right. Yeah, I, I apologize, court reporters. 2022, uh, this is Murphy, 2022-46914, I'm guessing AO. No? No. Yeah, you're right. I realized there's, there were no, yeah. there were no letters in that number. Oh, this is the agency number, probably. All right, did everybody get that? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Your Honor. One five seven seven. Ooh, Taylor. All right. Um, this is case number twenty twenty two CF one five six six eight zero. Miss Taylor does qualify for uh, pretrial release. So I will release, I will um, release you on pretrial release. You don't have to post a bond, but you have to follow their rules. You are to maintain separate residences and have no contact at all. Oh, is this, this was the sisters? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so you, you may return one time uh, with law enforcement to retrieve your personal belongings. Okay? Okay. Your Honor? DCF was also called, so if you can just put in there, comply with any DCF plan. I think, but they were the sister's kids, weren't they? No, I, my daughter was there. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. All right. So, yes, uh, apparently DCF's involved in the case, so you have to... My aunt said they already contacted her, so... Do whatever they tell you. Okay. Okie doke. Thank you. Daniels? All right, uh, Ms. Daniels. Oh, I think we have. I think we have the alleged victim later on. Daniels. No, no, no. White. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um. They can bring them both in at the same. No, time. no, 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 no. It's not necessary. It, it, the other guy was a warrant case. Apparently, after this incident, he went back and. It doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm bringing up superfluous facts that are irrelevant. Um, Your Honor, I was going to argue no PC in this. Oh. Wait a minute. Isn't this the one? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Out by the car with the other. Okay, I'm, I'm listening. Okay. Your Honor, I would argue no PC. Um, in order to have a battery, there must be an intentional touching or striking against the um, alleged victim's will. In this arrest affidavit, um, although there are um, injuries to both parties, neither party admitted to being hit by the other party. Um, Ms. White stated that, um, I believe she fell down the stairs. Well, she did. Go right. ahead. There were no witnesses, and neither party admitted to um, being hit by the other party. There's no evidence. Well, okay, so here's, I, I understand your argument. Now, I don't believe the officer that was present that day bought the stairs uh, ex explanation, but nonetheless, in this case, because we, we have 
the other guy later. Um, the officer observed uh, multiple bruises, bruised lips, scratches on his neck, cut on his hand, uh, and I, it is, you're correct that the alleged victim didn't explain how he received those. However, um, there was certainly uh, allegations of a struggle. So even without, uh, you know, I mean, the circumstantial evidence is something. I mean, is that not enough for PC? Your Honor, I would argue no in this case. I would just... Um, Ms. Eugene? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I thought I got the gist of your argument. Ms. Eugene, um, Ms. George is arguing, hey, uh, nobody said they got hit, therefore there's no PC. Your the Honor. affidavit certainly is fairly specific as to injuries sustained by the alleged victim in this case. There was evidence of a struggle of some sort, so I'm assuming that the circumstantial evidence is what prompted the officer to arrest Ms. Daniels. Your Honor, in the second paragraph, it does say that um, Ms. Daniels rushed the victim, and that could just be the officer's characterization of what happened, but it also said that another altercation amongst them occurred um, when he was trying to leave. So I believe between the rushing, the other altercation and the injuries that were observed, um, that yeah, yeah, he rushed. But if you read it, they rushed. She was ru he was rushing for her uh, the phone, Your Honor. If I'm not mistaken. Well, it was, it says White did not specify how Daniels rushed him as he tried to reset the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I I get it. I understand the argument, and but you know. I understand. PC is kind of a low bar. It has to exist. I'll give you that. Um, but I think the circumstantial evidence of the injuries, the, the testimony or statements as to altercations is enough. So um, I will find there's PC. Miss um, Daniels, you don't qualify for pretrial release, so I'll grant you a $500 bond on the charge. If you bond out, you are to maintain separate residences. I don't think that's an issue. but no contact with the victim whatsoever. Um, I didn't really see a need for any further restrictions. No, Your Honor. Okay, so no contact, maintain separate residences. I, don't need to, oh. no, I was just asking if she needed to grab, go back with law enforcement, but she said she No, I think it's her apartment. Oh. No, I don't. I think White, White is staying somewhere else. I won't be going back. She's not going back to that. But. I thought it was your apartment. Okay, I don't, you know what, I'm asking questions that I don't need to know. Okay, well, all right, then go somewhere else. Good luck to you. See, that's why I take two questions that don't need to be asked. But I'm self-aware of it. <laughs> I understand your question. All right, Mr. Uh, you say Griffo? All right, sir, you do qualify for pretrial release. So I will grant you uh, on that program. That means you don't have to post a bond, but you have to abide by their rules. Yes, and uh, you are going to be ordered to maintain separate, a separate residence and to have no contact whatsoever with the alleged victim, OK? Yes, sir. OK. May I have a question? Um, you may want to ask your lawyer first. These, do all the defendants Your Honor? know when they come out that they're being appointed to PD so they know they have a lawyer or not? Your Honor, can we also do uh, no weapons, no firearms, please? Uh, was there... Your Honor, if necessary, can we approach? Sorry? If necessary, can we approach, but I would like no weapons. Oh, is there a history of something? Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Um, so, Ms. George, the state is asking uh, for one further condition while he's released, that being no possession of no weapons, no firearms. Um, I, I don't know it's, if it's specific to this case, but there seems to be a basis for it, and I don't have an issue with it.
No, that's okay, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, I didn't say it, but you may return one time with law enforcement to retrieve personal items. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. <clears throat> so we're adding the weapons and stuff. <clears throat> Ms. Miller? Yes. All right, you live in New York, correct? Correct. All right. Um, and Ms. Davis, that's not an issue? It's not an issue. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you, uh, you qualify for pretrial release. Pretrial release means you don't have to post a bond, but you have to stay in contact and be supervised by that office. Okay. Um, and I believe that the affidavit indicated that you live as a family with the alleged victim so I'm going to order that you have no hostile contact what that means is you you can live together um, but if there's any um, if you act aggressive in any way it doesn't have to be physical could be verbal whatever and the alleged victim in the case calls uh, 911, then you will be arrested. And nobody's going to ask you what your side is. They'll just take you because you're under the jurisdiction of the court. Therefore, there's no due process right. Okay. Okay? So, and obviously, now I'm appointing the public defender's office to represent you, so you have a lawyer here. Um, and if your lawyer tells you you need to be in court, you need to come down here and be in court. Okay? okay? Yep. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, is this, we have a victim on the Pierce case? Sir, are you here for uh, the Victoria Pierce case? Yes, sir. All right, can you raise your right hand? You swear or affirm anything you say today should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. All right, you can put your hand down. You want to state your name for the record? Eric Huffman. Eric, can you say Huffman? Yes, sir, Huffman. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. George, Ms. Pierce, Mr. Huffman. Uh, the notes I had indicated she qualifies for PTR, I, and after reviewing the affidavit, I was simply going to order no hostile contact. I didn't see a need for, unless Mrs. Eugene, you, okay. The victim is here, Your Honor. He can state whether or not he wants to have contact. Uh, yes, sir. It's... Okay. And, um, well, I understand, but after reading the affidavit, I was okay with it. So I guess it's probably a good idea to get the victim to state on the record that they want it, right? All right. So, sir, you're okay with Ms. Pierce uh, returning to the home and having contact? Yes, sir. All right. He would like to retire release, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Pre-trial release, no hostile contact. Stay in touch with your lawyer. Uh, right. Is this Mr. Torres? Yeah. Oh, everybody just left. Everybody left. <laughs> Is there a fire? Oh, I guess they all came together. I don't know. Anyway. Everybody was here for the Pierce case. Yeah. All right. Um. In, in this case, Your Honor, I did not um, have a report. I don't know if you saw the report. It just states that a battery occurred, see report number, and it lists the number, but I don't have an actual report. Well, yeah. The parent, what he alluded to was a, a, a report, I think that was, had been made prior, previously that day. Yes, Your Honor. However, I, we. Well, so here's the thing. Um, and you're right. I don't see the other report. However, um, 
I think what would happen in that case is that he would be held over for 24 hours for the state to come up with the other report. Um, in the meantime, uh, I would, I'm willing to give, he doesn't qualify for PTR apparently, so I was willing to give him a $500 bond in order that he maintain separate residence, have no contact. I didn't really, I think it's mother, his mom. Is it is your mother? Is the alleged victim? Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. I, I just, that was my assumption. Um, so, uh, Ms. George, I understand your argument, and I don't necessarily disagree, um, but it's up to him. If he wants to post his bond and leave, um, we can address it today. If he wants to hang out for another night and see if the state can come up with the other report. Your Honor, I actually have no objection to you giving him a bond, but uh, yes, if you could give us the 24 hours for probable cause. It's just an issue with this. The number that was listed um, for the report is the same agency case number for this one. So. Oh, it's a Scrivener's error, probably. I understand. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, oh. So usually if. Well, but if, I, if, I, if he bonds, what's the point of the 24 hours? If, well, Your Honor, we did something similar on Monday where we had the two-line report, but you released that individual ROR. So at least they have the opportunity to... Well, I know, but I, I did, I, once they're gone, I don't... Because all I'm looking at is PC to hold. Understood, Your Honor, which is... And at this time, we don't have that PC. So to be fair to the defendant, he has the opportunity to bond yeah. out. However, state then still has the opportunity to get the PC. So at best, it's a 24-hour delay, at best. Okay, I'm just wondering, once he's gone... He wait. If he bonds out, he will waive any type of defect. Yeah, so... I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm happy to give you the 24 hours and a bond. Yes. Um, oh, I see, okay. All right. Okay, I got it. All right. That makes more sense. Okay. All right. Uh, so, sir, I'm granting you a $500 bond. Uh, if you do bond, uh, you are to maintain separate residence, no contact with the alleged victim, um, and I will give the state 24 hours to supplement the uh, affidavit. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. All right, good luck to you. So, Ms. George, what I'm being told is that if for whatever reason he doesn't post his bond today, then they'll bring him back. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and that makes sense. Mr. White? Uh, how you doing, Your Honor? Okay. Um, Mr. White, you do not qualify for pretrial release. Um, I will grant you a $500 bond in this case. Uh, you are to have no contact with the alleged victim. You are to maintain a separate residence. You may return one time with law enforcement to retrieve personal belongings. By the way, court reporters, that was... 2020. It has an MM number. It's an MM number. 9001. Oh, okay. So that's just an error. Yeah. Yeah. So that was case 2021 MM 9001AO. I cannot remember to say the case number. Good luck to you, sir. Uh, can I stay up on or no? Sorry? The house is in my lease. What am I supposed to do? If it's You're supposed to live somewhere else until uh, either the alleged victim has moved out and that can be verified and you can move back, or uh, your attorney files a motion with the judge to change the condition of no contact. Okay. You know what, Erlene? I, didn't, I guess I did not put... These notes on for these out. Oops, shoot. Warrants. And so let me see. Yeah, and see, look, this 
Well, I know, but I, I, I thought I was being good today, and I made notes, but apparently I didn't. All right, uh, Cardona. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Cardona, you're being held on an out-of-county warrant for uh, Osceola County. You have it. You have two, and they both have, or two counts anyway, and you do have bonds on that. One's 5,000, one's 1,000. I will stay the bonds. Denizak? Yes, sir. All right, sir, you're being held on a bond for Volusia County, or a warrant, sorry, for Volusia County. You do have a $1,000 bond for that warrant. I will stay that at $1,000. Good luck to you. Okay. All right. Uh, Dickens? Sir. All right, Mr. Dickens, you're being held for a warrant out of, or maybe two warrants, out of Seminole County. They do not have a bond, and I am going to keep them at the no bond status. All right, good luck to you. So the warrant out of Volusia is a VOP warrant, right? Is that what I'm looking at? Okay. All right. So you're wanted on a warrant out of Volusia County. It is for a violation of probation. Therefore, there's no bond, and I will leave it at no bond. Are these um, are these other two cases Orange County cases? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and I'm assuming, oh yeah, it was drug possession, and these are related. All right, I will go ahead and revoke. Your Honor, I would, um, I don't, I don't have access to the out-of-county warrant. I can't see when the alleged incident occurred. Because both are showing 2021 case numbers, I would ask um, that you take no action, because we don't, I don't have a date to see, to compare it when these, this alleged incident occurred. Well, Apparently, neither do I. Yes, Your Honor. That's why I would ask that you take no action. But he was on felony probation in Volusia County for possession of cocaine. And the two charges, first, the first case in Orange County is a 2021 case, just as the VOP is. And that's possession of cocaine and methamphetamine. And then the 2022 case, which arguably may have taken place, but I don't know. Maybe the you know maybe the violation is the 2022, and it just didn't. Um, and he got out on bond before the VOP dropped because of it. I don't know. That's that's why I would ask that you take no action. We don't have enough information to know when these alleged incidences occurred. Yeah, but the, the, they're typically when I look at those, I look to see if they're you know, and if they're not you know, rela sufficiently related, I usually don't take any action on the other ones. But these are all, this seems to be an, an issue with uh, drug use. So um, I will note your your motion, I guess. Uh, deny it and revoke on the two Orange County cases and leave them at no bond on the Volusia County. No, I'm revoking both of them. Henry? Morning, sir. All right, Mr. Henry, you're being held on uh, Osceola County warrants. You have bonds of 1,500 on count one, 
1,500 on count two and 1,000 on count three. I will stay those. I'll leave those bonds in those amounts on those counts. Good luck to you. I do to use that one. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Edwards. Yes, All right, sir. Um, you were picked up for violation of probation on felony drug charges. Um, and so there is no bond on that. And you will have, if you want to be released, you'll have to seek release from the judge on the case. Rana, he has a new case as well. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You have a bond on one of these. Oh, he's got a new law? Oh, 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 I see. Okay, I, I apologize. You have one case, the 2020 CF 1007780 is uh, a violation of probation warrant that you were picked up on, I, I assume, or might, might have been an on view. Uh, in any event, there's no bond on that, and I'm, I won't grant you one. You do have a bond, however, on 2022, the new law, CF 1573AO, and, that, and I'll stay that bond. That is $1,000. Um, what about the contempt of court? That's, That's civil, so I don't have to do anything with that. No, you don't have to do anything. All right, cool. All right. No bond on the VOP. You do have a bond on the new law, and I'm not going to address the civil because it's not in my purview. Good luck to you. Thanks. Helmick? Yes, sir. Okay, sir, you are here on a violation of probation in case number 2021 CF710880. Uh, you have no bond on that VOP, and I will. Uh, you'll have to seek release from the judge on that case. Okay. Ms. Ratchford. Yes, sir. Uh, you also are here for violation of probation on 2018 CF 14181 AO and 2018 CF 13382 AO. Uh, the Judge, you signed those warrants, did not give you a bond on those, and I'm leaving them at no bond. You will have to seek release from the judge on your case. All right, good luck to you. Mr. Valencia? All right, sir, uh, you're here on violation of probation on 2019 CF 953380. Uh, the warrant was signed, indicated no bond, and um, I will leave it at no bond. You will have to seek release from the judge on that case. The 33-day. Okay, uh, I got a couple 33 days. The first one is La, For La Fortune. Case number 2021-CF16043AO. Granted, notice of non-filing. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, Wilcox Maxwell, 22, 2022 CF 111AO. Granted, notice of non-filing. Okay, and one more. Uh, Bond Court is a free service but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free, then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. And it's 737 West no, Colonial Park says she doesn't need it. Okay. All right, uh, this is Mr. Whitley. All right, um, so this is the case in question that Prior to going on the record, I was chatting with Ms. Eugene about Ms. George hadn't um, offered a, a, an opinion uh, yet, probably because the judge was making her argument. Yep. <laughs> so, um, 
I, I, Ms. Eugene, well, all right, so let's, let's to, for the record, first of all, this is case 2022 CF 1555 AO. Uh, I believe it, it came in with a thousand dollar bond, which is fine. The problem I have with this case is reading the PC affidavit. The law enforcement officer was called to the store because a clerk thought that somebody may be shoplifting. According to the affidavit, the officer arrives at the store while the suspect is still in the store. I believe he observed the defendant maybe putting things in his pockets, etc. However, subsequent to that, the suspect went to the counter, took everything out of his pockets, attempted to pay. The card that was used was declined. At that point, he was ordered outside by law enforcement. So I, I, I think that's a seizure under the law, under the Fourth Amendment. Yes, Your Honor, and it does say that it was pending an investigation, so yes. And, but the investigation was for shoplifting. Yes, Your Honor. The cop actually stood in the store and watched this person put all the items on the counter, attempt to pay. Shoplifting means you pass all points of sale without making any attempt to pay. And I don't believe he took them once his card was declined, or the card was declined. So I, I, I'm, I'm really struggling with this, Ms. Eugene. I understand your point is like, wait a minute, we got a guy who's got two wallets that aren't his and, and, and a card that's not even attached to that, the wallet. So something's going on, but your Honor, this is not within the four corners of the affidavit, but it is not unusual for someone to pay for some items, um, but then not pay for other items that are still hidden wherever. So it is not... Nobody said he had anything on him. But yes, they did, Your Honor, because he was removing merchandise from concealed locations in his pockets and backpack. Yeah. So what I'm saying, Your Honor, is it's not outside the realm of possibility to continue that investigation just because he approached the register and attempted to pay for some items. Oh, so your, your point is to continue they, were, they were trying to see if he had any other contraband on him. Well, but they took him out of the store. If, he, if they, they found it in the store, he still had the opportunity to pay. I don't know. This is... I don't like this one. And Your Honor, the business even declined to prosecute for attempted theft of merchandise. Because they got everything back. Yes. That's not what he's charged with, Your Honor. He's oh, not I, I, I know that, but that's why they were there, and he didn't do anything wrong. He did not commit a crime in their presence that they had knowledge of. This is like, what was the movie with Tom Cruise? Uh, Minority Report. The, the cop had ESP and said, okay, he tried to pay for this stuff, his car was declined, so, so he's not shoplifting, but I am certain, I have a feeling that there are some crimes being committed here, so I'm going to seize him and find out what those are. And again, Your Honor, my position is this is a probable cause hearing. He is charged with a fraudulent impersonation using someone else's identification. He had someone else's identification on him. The court's argument is defense. It is a motion to suppress. But with regard to the probable cause of this incident, I believe there is probable cause for that, Your Honor. Your Honor, I would just ask that based on the facts of this um, arrest affidavit that um, you just ROR my client um, as to the fraud use and personal identification. I think that... Um, I would. Yeah, no, I understand. And and I understand Ms. Eugene's argument. I, I just have an issue with obtaining the probable cause or the arrest in this case without a reasonable suspicion of a crime being committed. I agree, Your Honor. I mean, even if the cop had seen the, had, had, he was standing there, if he had seen that the name on the card was a, fe a female's name, that might have been some PC. 
to investigate further. But, and Ms. Eugene, as you well know, even if I do ROR this guy, it doesn't mean he can't proceed on the prosecution. You know, there may be some motions, but I don't know, you know, I'm just, but I, yeah, I don't, so I will ROR him. Is that different than finding there's no PC? And does that make a difference for anybody here? Is that your finding, Your Honor, that there is no PC, or are you just not convinced you'll go forward with PC but still ROR? Mm. I just want to let them go. I'm going to let them go because I don't think they had the right to to arrest him. You know. Is there PC or no, Your Honor? I I am no. I am not convinced there was PC to arrest him for fraudulent use of a credit card. It just wasn't. Somebody said, hey, this guy's shoplifting. So the cop shows up. He doesn't shoplift. End of story. Are you taking no action Sorry. on the bond, Your Honor? Yeah, no action on the 2021 CF 15725 AL. Oh, no, I keep this. All right. Is this Mr. Perez Juarez? Yes. All right, uh, sir. Oh, we're on Spanish now. Okay. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Teodoro Leal, Spanish interpreter. The interpreter has already been sworn, Your Honor. Okay, and the uh, defendant has the headset on at the podium. The case number, do you have the case numbers or you need them? Well, we need the case numbers, Your Honor. Thank All right. So the first uh, defendant is Mr. Perez Juarez, case number 2021-MM167AW. Mr. Perez, whereas uh, you failed to appear in this case, the judge that issued the warrant for Capius did give you bonds of $500 on count one, $100 on count two, and $100 on count three. I will leave the bonds at those amounts. Good luck to you. Oh, and I'm... Also being told, sir, that I'm to tell you that you have a an immigration hold. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next case, is this our last case? Uh, oh, no, we have two more. The next case is uh, Mr. Gomez. The case number is 2022-CF1511-AO. Uh, Mr. Gomez has the headphones on. Uh, Ms. Davis, I see that this was updated. Um, and so he doesn't qualify. Is it because of the charge? Yes. All right. So, sir... You, um, hmm. all right, sir, you were arrested on, oh, this is Kate. No, oh, did I, I did the case number. Two counts of DUI manslaughter, two counts of vehicular homicide. Was it the same victims? I mean, well, whatever. And DUI with serious bodily injury. Sir, I will grant you a bond of 10000 on count one, 10000 on count two, 5000 on count three, 5000 on count four, and 5000 on count five. If you do post that bond, you will have no contact with anyone involved in the case. You will also not drink any alcohol or take any illegal drugs and you will be subject to random urinalysis 
by the Office of Pretrial Release during the pendency of this case. That's fine. All right, good luck to you. All right, uh, the last case is uh, Villanueva Rodriguez, uh, case number 2022, CF 154980. Uh, sir, I w I'm going to grant you, you came in with a, a $3,500 bond on count one and a $1,500 bond on count two. I'm going to stay those bonds. They will remain at that amount. Should you post a bond, you are to have no contact whatsoever with any alleged victims in the case. You are to maintain a separate residence. You are to possess no weapons and no firearms. You may return to the residence one time under the escort of law enforcement to retrieve personal belongings. I have also appointed the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in this case. So you may want to get in touch with your attorney as soon as possible. Good luck to you. All right, Mr. Interpreter, um, I believe that is the last Spanish case we had. Very well, Your Honor. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Your Honor. All right, uh, we're doing- You are the only participant. Uh, these, we're doing pleables now? Yes, Your Honor. All right, uh, Ms. George, are pretty much everybody clean? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so the first one I have is Mr. Barnes, 2022-MM870-AO. 2022 Mr. Barnes, can you raise your right hand? You swear or affirm everything you say today should be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right, put your hand down. All right, Ms. George, oh, sorry, Your Honor. Uh, you want to put the agreement on the record? Yes, Your Honor. The offer from the state is an adjudication of guilt, credit time served, no return to the 7-Eleven located at 605 West Colonial Drive. I did speak to Mr. Barnes. He would like to accept the state's offer and enter a plea of no contest. And he has two days, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Davis, are they, is everything two days? Just about, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Barnes, did you hear what your attorney said the resolution to this case was going to be? Yes, sir. Is that what you understood you were coming here to agree to? Yes. Sir, I've been handed a plea form. I don't know if you can see from over there, but there's a signature on the bottom. Is that your signature? Yes. Did you read this form? Yes. Did you understand the form? Yes. Do you have any questions about this form? No. All right. Because you read and understood the form, and I'm certain you spoke with Ms. George about this, you understand it's a criminal charge, and therefore you have every right to go to trial if you choose. But because you're going to enter a plea today, they're not going to have, we're not going to have a trial. The case is over. So you're waiving your right to a trial. Do you understand you're giving up your right to a trial by entering the plea? Yes. Are you satisfied with the assistance of your lawyer? Yes. Are you currently on probation for any other matter? No. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? No. Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? No. And finally, sir, whether it applies to you or not, do you understand the idea that if you are not a U.S. citizen, Entering a plea to a criminal charge would subject you to deportation. You understand that concept? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to find that you please freely and voluntarily entered, uh, that you have knowingly and willingly waived your right to have a trial, and you've had assistance of counsel with whom you say you're satisfied. I assume you're entering a plea of no contest. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Mr. George, it says he's been employed off and on. You want to be heard as to court costs? 
Your Honor, I would ask, he's, uh, my client's currently homeless, so I just ask for, um, you reduce the lien, you reduce it to a lien. All right. Um, so, sir, I'm going to order that you pay your court costs, cost prosecution, and public defender lien. Uh, those amounts come to $323. I will reduce, reduce those to a civil judgment. That means that um, you owe the money to Orange County, but there's no way that they can make you pay it, and they cannot keep you from um, obtaining a driver's license or voting uh, without paying it, okay? Do you have any questions about the plea that you entered today? If you wish to appeal that sentence, you have to do it in writing in 30 days. If you cannot afford an attorney for the appeal, one would be appointed for you. Uh, this will, oh, we're, no fingerprints on trespass, right? No. Okay, all right, concludes the case. Good luck to you. Oh, uh, released as to this case. Oh, I didn't give him the two days, did I? You did. You oh, did. I did? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm getting so efficient, I didn't even know I did it. <sighs> Mr. Cody? Yes, sir. All right. Oh. Uh, are we playing? I don't know why I don't have. It's a trespass. Oh, Advent Health. He had just been treated there or something, but he was trespassed. It's an adjudication and credit time served, Your Honor. Uh, for me, I do not do no returns to the hospital. To oh Vegas, yeah, that's probably smart. Or to the airport. He has one day, Your Honor. I don't know why it's not in my stack, Your Honor. I didn't well, do you need to talk to him about it? Yes. All right. Um, can we just? I need to get his paper because I need to check. I want to make sure I don't plea him and he has any issues. Um, can we just recall him? Yeah. Ms. Eugene, do you know if um, Mr. Cody's I didn't got see, any other I didn't see anything issues? else pending, Your Honor. His last conviction was November of last year. I don't see anything. Okay. I don't have the form. So I'm like, I don't have um, mine. I can't bother you, so fill out the plea form. Just get his name. Yeah. Thank you. I can multitask, Your Honor. All right. Well, who's talking to Mr. Cody? Oh, he's not next. No, no. This no. Cody's the one we we just oh, skipped. Okay. This is Mr. Haynes. Mr. Haynes released, Your Honor. Oh. I just asked that he be reset for tomorrow. He has an offer, Your Honor. Yeah. I wasn't very happy about the PC on this one, but it was better than the last one. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll reset him for a plea, possible plea, I guess. Oh, and that is case number 2022-MM878AO. That was Haynes. So is this Mr. Holman? Yes, sir. Mr. Holman, do you live in D.C.? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, the, the offer from the state, Your Honor, is a withhold credit time served and no return. He's 9840 International Drive. Um, I did speak to Mr. Holman. Um, he would like to accept the state's offer and enter plea of no contest. I would ask for a one-time return with law enforcement so he can gather his uh, belongings. Sure. All right. Uh, Mr. Holman, can you raise your right hand and face me? Do you swear or affirm everything you say today should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right. You can put your hand down, sir. Um, and we have a plea form. Oh, sorry. He has two days, Your Honor. Two days. All right. I don't have any. I don't have any way to call them. They have. They have every. I think. But me. Okay. Are we good? He's just saying that all his belongings, even his phone, is at the hotel, so he has no way to contact law enforcement to. Accompany him to get his belongings, Your Honor. I'm, I'm the victim of uh, a gun tragedy. Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes, just calm down. I understand. Well, in light of your last statement, sir, do you wish to enter a plea in this case? No. We're taking the state's offer. Well, that's what I mean. Oh, yes. I mean, because it. All right. All right. Did I swear him in? I think I did. No, I didn't. I didn't. Did I swear you in? 
Did I just make you raise your right hand? I did. Okay. All right. I'm losing it, people. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Homan, what I am told is that the offer from the state, if you want to enter a plea of not, uh, no contest today, is a withhold of adjudication. That, that means you're not convicted of anything. Okay. Um, you would be sentenced to two days in the Orange County Jail. You've got credit for two days already, so that's done. You would be released as to this case, all right? The only other issue would you be, is you would be uh, paying your court costs, cost of prosecution, public defender lien. That comes to $323. I can give you six, seven, eight months to pay it if, you, if you'd like. Um, the other issue is that you may not return to the uh, hotel at 9840 International Drive in Orlando, Florida. However, you would be permitted to uh, return uh, one time under the escort of law enforcement to retrieve your personal items. So uh, after reciting that, um, is it your wish to enter a plea and accept that offer from the state today? Yes, sir. All right. Sir, I've been handed a plea form. There is a signature at the bottom. Is that your signature? Up here. Okay. Did you go over this form with uh, Ms. George? Yes, sir. Did you understand what was in the form? Absolutely. All right. Uh, and so because you have reviewed it and discussed it, you realize that this is a misdemeanor charge. You have every right to go to trial if you choose and force the state to prove that you did what they say you did. But because you're going to enter this plea today, you're giving up the right to a trial. The case is over today, and we're not having one. So you realize you're waiving your right to a trial, correct? All right. Are you satisfied with the assistance of your lawyer? Yes, sir. Are you currently on probation for any other matter? No. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? No. And finally, sir, whether it applies to you or not, do you understand the idea that if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea to a criminal charge would subject you to deportation? I'm sorry? I understand. Okay. I just got to get it recorded so you can't come back and say I never said that. All right, sir, I'll find your plea is freely and voluntarily entered. You've knowingly and willingly waived your right to have a trial. You've had assistance of counsel with whom you say you're satisfied. I assume that you are en uh, entering a plea of no contest, meaning you just want to resolve it, not contest it. Is that right? Yes, sir. I'll accept your plea of no contest. I'll withhold adjudication, order you to serve two days in the Orange County Jail, I'll give you credit for the two days you've already done. Uh, Order you to pay your court costs, cost of prosecution, public defender lien in the amount of $323. If I gave you about eight months to pay it, is that enough? That's enough. Eight months to pay your court costs, and for the next year, you may not return. Well, yeah, I, I, that's fine. Um, just don't forget about it, because if it's not paid by the end of the year, um, Florida will issue a suspension on your license, which every state has reciprocity. So once DC finds out about it, they'll suspend you up there. I would agree. All right. So, um, yeah, a year to pay is fine. And then you may not return to whatever the hotel was at 9840 International Drive, Orlando, Florida. However, you may return one time with law enforcement escort to retrieve your belongings. Uh, sir, do you have any questions about the plea that you entered today? If you wish to appeal that sentence, you have to do it in writing in 30 days. If you cannot afford an attorney for the appeal, one will be appointed for you. This he is to be released as to this case. I guess, why am I looking at Ms. Davis when I say that? I don't know. All right, sir, this will conclude the case. Good luck to you. All right. I think because my trauma clerk is usually to my left. Um, and, Your Honor, this is Cody. Oh. All right, uh, so we're back on uh, Randall Cody, 2022 MM 70 AA. Uh, yes, Your Honor. The offer from the state is an adjudication of guilt, credit time served. Um, I did speak to Mr. Cody. He went over the records with us. He's going to go over the records with us in the location. All right. Somebody get some oil for that thing. May I approach him? You may. All right. All right. Now I got to ask again. Did, it, did, did I have you raise your right hand and swear you're going to tell the truth and everything before? Oh, Your Honor. Well, he says he did. Yeah. Sir, sir, can you raise your right hand and face me? We'll just do it. We'll do it three times just to make sure. No, he didn't. Mr. Cody. 
Do you swear or affirm everything you say today should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Sir. All right, you can put your hand down. All right, so Mr. Cody, um, and this, I already put the case number on. Um, so, you had a minute to discuss the case with Ms. George, and she told you that the state has made an offer to resolve it. It's my understanding, sir, that you wish to enter a plea of no contest today and accept that offer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, sir, I've been handed a plea form. I don't know if you can see from over there, but there's a signature down here on the bottom. Is that your signature? Yes, sir. All right. Did you go over this form with Ms. George? Yes, sir. Did you understand the form after going over it with Ms. George? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about it? All right, because you went over it, you understood it, you realize that this is a misdemeanor charge, it's a criminal matter, you have every right to go to trial if you choose, but because you're going to enter a plea today, the case is going to be done right now, so we're not having a trial. Do you understand you're waiving your right to a trial by entering the plea? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with the assistance of your lawyer? Yes, sir. Are you currently on probation for any other matter? Yes, sir. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? Yes, sir. Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? Okay. Um, and finally, sir, whether it applies to you or not, do you understand the idea that if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea to a criminal charge would subject you to deportation? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. I will find your pleas freely and voluntarily entered. You've knowingly and willingly waived your right to have a trial. You've had assistance of counsel with whom you say you're satisfied. Uh, sir, I assume you're entering a plea of no contest. Is that correct? I'll accept your plea of no contest. I'll adjudicate you guilty of trespass, order you to serve one day in the Orange County Jail, give you credit for the one day that you've already done. He is to be released as to this case. Um, Ms. George, you want to be heard as to court costs? Yes, Your Honor. Um, my client is currently transient, so I would ask that you reduce the um, court costs to me. All right, sir. Um, I'm going to order that you pay uh, the court costs the public defender lien, and the cost of prosecution. All that comes to $323. However, I'm going to reduce that to a civil judgment. That means that the paperwork you're going to get says you owe the money. The reality is Orange County has no way to force you to pay it. They cannot keep you from driving or voting by not paying it. So it's essentially a nullity. All right. Do you have any questions about the plea you entered today? If you wish to appeal that sentence, you have to do it in writing in 30 days. If you cannot afford an attorney for the appeal, one will be appointed for you. Uh, this will resolve the case. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Is this uh, Mr. Mann? Yes, sir. Is this Mr. Mann? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And there, there is an offer to resolve the case of a withhold credit time served, Your Honor. However, um, he does not have any type of convictions on his um, record. So I would ask for pretrial release. He'd probably qualify for pretrial diversion. Oh, okay. So you want to let him out to see if he can do PTD? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So, sir, um, you qualify for pretrial release. Um, I'm, Ms. George, I, I'm sure told you that there was an offer to resolve the case, um, but, oh, and this is case 2022 mm 676 a Is that 876 or 876-AO? Uh, however, um, you may have an opportunity to take advantage of pretrial diversion. Um, they don't know at this point, so... Um, what your attorney is suggesting is that I just release you on pretrial release so you can look into that option. Is that what you want to do? Yes, sir. All right. I'll release you on pretrial release. Um, I guess that's it. Any conditions, Ken? Well, don't get in a car that's... No, I guess I can't do that. Um, I don't know. Uh, what conditions would you, uh, there were no weapons or good drugs or alcohol that I remember. They were co-defendants, Your Honor. And oh, I see, I got to stop being so cryptic. Yeah, no contact with the co-defendants. And I believe he also went into the back of a home. Where well, no, he tried to get in the door. Sir, yeah, don't admit to stuff. It's just not advisable. Um, I think, I, if I remember right, he tried the front, the guy slammed the door and, yes. and then he laid down, I think. So no, no, what are you saying? No return? 
I'm, I'm, you know what, Your Honor, I'm fine with just the no contact with codees. Okay. No contact with co-defendants. Okay. I'm okay with don't go back to that house. Okay. I don't know what the address was, but you need the address? Yeah. Nope. And I'll return to Tina. All right. Good luck to you, sir. Stay in touch with your lawyer. Was that also a no return to the scene? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is this Mr. Oderman? Yes, sir. Your Honor, um, in this particular, oh, you probably want to mention the case number first. Sorry. Of course I do. <laughs> I do that every time. 2022 MM 871 AO. This isn't a co-defendant, is it? No, that was a that was the Lexus. This is. Is he? Uh, I'm, I'm checking. Is this the same event? As man? Um, I'm checking, Your Honor. It's. Uh, My note was rented car. Somebody said they rented a car from somebody who they also said is known to steal cars. No. Um, for man, it was a blue Lexus. This is a uh, RAV4, Your Honor. Oh, okay. They, didn't they say they rented it from a guy they didn't know his name? I believe so, Your Honor. I wonder if they got the insurance. Um, Ms. George, there, is there an offer on this? Are we playing it? What's going on? Um, there is an offer. However, my client has no criminal history, so I would. Um, All right, same thing. I would ask, he doesn't qualify for pre-trial release. Uh, okay, so I would ask for pre-trial release, Your Honor. Okay. So, sir, you qualify for pre-trial release. I'm going to release you on that. You don't have to post a bond. You just have to follow their rules. Get in touch with your lawyer. The PD's office represents you. They're going to look into possible diversion for you, okay? Any conditions you want to order? You don't have you, to. I'm just asking. Well, I, I, uh, did he have, oh, there were co-defendants. Were there co-defendants in this? Um, if there was, no contact with the co-defendants. Okay. Thank you. I don't remember. I, I think there was somebody else in the car, but I don't know if yeah. they got charged. I don't think so. And your honor, the there is an offer to resolve this case. It's an adjudication of guilt, credit time served, no return to discount the discount cigar store located at 403 West Kennedy Boulevard in Orlando, Florida. Mr. Pickett would like to accept the state's offer and enter a plea of no contact. What was the street number? I got West Kennedy. What was the street number? Four four zero three. Your Honor, I didn't put the case number on there because on my form it doesn't have a case number. I got one. Thank you. All right, so this is Mr. Pickett, case number 2022-MM29AE. Mr. Pickett, can you raise your right hand and face me? Um, Do you swear or affirm everything you say today? It should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Uh, All right, and put your hand down. Mr. Pickett, I am told by your attorney that uh, you wish to enter a plea of no contest today and accept the offer to resolve this case from the state. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, um, sir, I've been handed a plea form. There's a signature down here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it from over there, but uh, is that your signature? Yes, sir. All right, did you go over this form with Ms. George? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you understand what was on the form after discussing it with her? I did. All right, do you have any questions about it? No, sir. All right, because you went over this form and you understood it, you realize that this is a criminal matter. You have every right to go to trial if you choose, but because you're going to enter this plea today, you're giving up the right to a trial because the case is going to be done today and we're not going to have one. Do you understand you're waiving your right to a trial? I understand that, John. All right. Are you satisfied with the assistance of Ms. George? Yes, sir. Are you currently on probation for any other matter? No, no sir. Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? Yes, sir. 
sir. Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? No, sir. And finally, sir, whether it applies to you or not, uh, do you understand the idea that if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea to a criminal charge would subject you to deportation? Do you understand that concept? Understand. All right, I'm going to find that you please freely and voluntarily entered. You've knowingly and willingly waived your right to have a trial, and you've had assistance of counsel with whom you say you're satisfied. I believe the form indicated you're entering a plea of no contest. Is that correct? That's correct. I will accept your plea of no contest. Um, was this two days? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll adjudicate you guilty of the charge of trespass. I'll sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail. I'll give you credit for the two days that you've already done. Thank you. Uh, Piers, I don't know if he's getting it now, but he was on SSI, looks like. All right. Um, sir, I'm going to order that you pay your court costs, your cost of prosecution, and the public defender lien. That amount comes to $323. However... I will reduce that to a civil judgment. That means that the paperwork's going to say you owe Orange County $323, but they have no way to, or, to force you to pay it, okay? Yes, All right. Do you have any questions about the plea that you entered today? Yes, sir. If you wish to appeal that sentence, you have to do it in writing in 30 days. If you cannot afford an attorney for the appeal, one will be appointed for you. If I didn't say it before, he's to be released as to this case. All right, sir, that, res that resolves his case. Good luck to you. Is this Mr. Baez? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Baez, um, you're, you got picked up because you failed to appear. Um, did the, was there a bond on the capius? I, I wrote 500 on yeah. here. Okay, so yeah, so you have a bond of 500 on that. I don't know the return to court order what that is. Oh, first of all, the case number that he was that he FTA'd on was 2021 MM 6780BO. He also has 2021 MM 7173AO which says return per court order. I don't know what that means. Um he has to go back to Seminole County to finish out his um time he would finish out his time I'm sentenced to the start of the arc of correction for yeah. 18 months I no longer have anything over the seminal county um and I I'm not saying you do I'm saying this is what it says on the paper and I don't know what that means or what I'm supposed to do with it you don't you don't do anything I ignore it yes you're fantastic that's my favorite thing <laughs> your honor um in this particular case he has a private attorney so I'd ask we not be appointed oh you gotta uh okay I mean, there was an offer to resolve, but I can't because he has a private attorney, Your Honor. Well, it says non pleable though. Okay. I'd like to accept the offer. But my attorney is not here today. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, okay then. You have a five hundred dollar bond, so you can bond out if you want. Or wait, did, uh, did he just tell me he's in DOC? He's been sentenced to DOC. Oh, in a different case. Yes. Oh. Yeah, you might as well please us out, right? Yeah, what the heck? All right. Well, you can't do it. So, uh, am I? <laughs> the FT, the KP has had a five hundred dollar bond. Obviously, you can't post it, mm -hmm. or you could, but what would be the point? Um, so, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And my advice is get your lawyer on the phone and see if you can get something done to. Resolve this so you can move on with the other stuff. Yes, sir. All right, so just stay the bond. You already did it, didn't you? It's probably already scanned, isn't it? I knew it. Mr. Graham? He bonded your honor. Oh, my other favorite. Mr. McGrath? State misdemeanors. Oh, I love those. All right, uh, are we playing this? Yes, Your Honor. The offer... <laughs> He's like, yes. Um, the offer is a withhold credit time served. I did speak to Mr. Graham. We went over all the rights he would be given. This is McGrath. I mean, I... McGrath. McGrath. Yeah, this is McGrath. Uh, Graham refused. Or uh, no, he bonded. He bonded. Sorry, Your Honor. Um, I did speak with Mr. McGrath. We went over the rights he would be given up, and he would like to accept the state's offer and enter a plea of no contest. He has one day, Your Honor. He has one day. Would be helpful. 
help that thing. It's dying. Mr. McGrath, can you raise your right hand and face me? Do you swear or affirm everything you say today should be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Absolutely. All right, you can put your hand down. All right, Mr. McGrath, I'm told by your attorney that uh, you wish to accept the state's offer of a withhold adjudication credit time served and your fine and filing fee comes to 233. Oh, wait, but we got to do PD lien? Yes, Your Honor. So it's actually 283. Um, so, sir, I'm being told by your attorney. Oh, wait, I don't have a case number on this either. Either. I don't have the case number. Is that, do we do AO on that? AO. AO. All right, so in 2022, what the, the one that the clerk just announced, um, you want to accept that offer, correct? Yes, sir. Sir, I've been handed a plea form. There's a signature on the bottom. Is that your signature? Yes, sir. Did you read the form or go over the form, Ms. George? Well, let me ask the question. <laughs> All right, and after you did that, did you understand the form? Any questions about the form? Any questions? No. All right. So because you went over the form, you understood it, you realized that you have a right to go to trial in this um, case, but because you're going to accept the offer and enter the plea, you're giving up the right to have that trial because the case is done today. So we're, you're not going to have one. You understand that? Yes. Are you satisfied with the assistance of your lawyer? Yes. Are you currently on probation for any other matter? Are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol today? Nope. Are you, have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? No. And finally, whether it applies to you or not, do you understand the idea that if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea to a criminal, tri criminal charge, excuse me, would subject you to deportation? I will find that your plea is freely and voluntarily entered, that you've knowingly and willingly waived your right to have a trial. You've had assistance of counsel with whom you say you're, say you're satisfied. I'm assuming you're entering a plea of no contest. Is that correct? I'll accept your plea of no contest. I'll withhold adjudication. I'll uh, sentence you, was it one or two? One. I'll sentence you to one day in the Orange County Jail. I'll give you credit for one day you've already done. You're released as to this case. Order you to pay your the fine, filing fee, and public defender lien. That comes to $283. If I give you six months to pay that, sir, is that enough time? Sure. All right, six months to pay. You have any questions about the plea you entered? If you wish to appeal the sentence, you got to do it in writing in 30 days. If you cannot afford an attorney for the appeal, one will be appointed for you. This case is resolved. Good luck to you. Is this Astacio Velez? Yes. All right. Sir, you're here on a KPS for failing to appear in 2021 CT. 4534AO, also in 2021-CT7904AO. He's signing a plea form? Yes. The offer is a withhold credit time served to resolve both cases, Your Honor. Um, what are they? No valid. There are no valid driver's license. Oh, he's got no two valid. no valids? Yes, Your Honor. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure. Right? I made a mistake, but that's not what I relate to you, so I'll go with the withhold on both. One of them should have been an adjudication, but that's not what I relate to you, so I'll stick by what I gave, gave you. You get the benefit of the okay. Scrivener's error. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Are we going to ding them with court costs twice? <laughs> I guess that's up to me, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Just got a bunch of these, Ms. Eugene. I only ask because a lot of times there are a lot of them. Uh, no, Your Honor, he does not, at least not in the state of Florida. He oh. does have... Well, that's refreshing. ...an out-of-state warrant, but uh -oh. I don't know what that is for, Your Honor. Uh -oh. Um It states that extradition is unknown, which is why he got the first uh, withhold. Oh, Boone but County, no, is North Carolina. It's a misdemeanor charge up there. All right. <laughs> Okay, so it's withhold court costs on each one, right? Yes, Your Honor. Even though that wasn't the intent? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, and I did announce the, the cases. Mr. Estacio Velez, please raise your right hand and face me. Do you swear or affirm everything you say today should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. And you can put your hand down. 
Sir, I'm uh, told that you wish to accept the state's offer on these two cases, um, which would be a withhold of adjudication on each, and you would pay your court costs, cost of prosecution, and public defender lien um, by entering a plea of no contest today. Is that correct? You want to enter a plea and accept the offer? Do you want to resolve these cases today? Habla okay. inglés. He needs the interpreter. He understands some, but... <laughs> All I right. act, I act. He thought he could understand. All right, put him to the end. Oh, you might want to call now. Because they go to... They go to oh, call now? Your Honor. All right, I'm calling now. Get someone out. This is going so smooth. I mean, it was going smooth. I was so impressed with myself today. <laughs> How well... <laughs> Good morning, Your Honor. This is Rafael Barrera, State Certified Court Interpreter. I have been previously sworn. Fantastic. Uh, we have one case to deal with. Actually, two case numbers, one defendant. Do you need both case numbers or is one sufficient? If you wouldn't mind, Your Honor, for giving me both case numbers, I would certainly appreciate it. Okay, so this is 2021 CT 4534AO. It is also 2021 CT 7904AO. Uh, the defendant's name is Mr. Astacio Velez, who has the headphones on. Once Thank you, Your Honor. If you allow me just a moment to connect and confirm to the headsets, Judge. Your Honor, the interpreter can confirm that the defendant is able to hear through the headsets. All right. Um, it's just a Spanish plea form, Your Honor, as opposed to the English. Oh, we're going to go with the facade that he read it. Okay. All right, could you ask Mr. Estacio to raise his right hand and face me? Sir, do you swear or affirm everything you say today shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Si. Yes. You put your hand down, sir. All right. It's my understanding, sir, that you wish to accept the state's offer today in both of these cases by entering a plea of no contest. The agreed upon sentence is a withhold of adjudication in each case, and you would pay your court costs, cost of prosecution, and public defender lien, no further sanctions. Is it your intent to enter a plea and accept the offer in both of these cases today? See. Si. Yes. Sir, I've been handed a plea form, a Spanish plea form. Down here at the bottom is a signature. Is that your signature? See. Si. Yes. All right. Did you read this form or did you discuss the form with Ms. George? See. Si. Yes. Okay. Did you feel that you understood sufficiently uh, the rights that are being waived, including the right to have a trial in this case? After discussing that form with Ms. George? Hey. Yes. Okay. So you understand that if you wanted to, you could have a trial in both of these cases and see if the state could prove you drove without a license. But because you're going to enter a plea today, both cases will be done right now, and therefore we're not having a trial. Do you understand you're giving up your right to have that trial by entering this plea? Okay. Clarification, Your Honor. See. Si. Yes. Are you satisfied with the assistance of your lawyer? Si. Yes. Are you currently on probation for any other matter? Mm. What was that? All right, sir, are you required to either call or report in person to someone from the state or county once a month in connection to any other criminal matter? Clarification, Your Honor. No te entiendo, no te entendí lo que dijiste. Uh, yes, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding what you're telling me. 
We always have this problem. What? Not him. What's a word for probation? Oh, you're not. Oh. Okay. No, what did you say? I think he's asking you what you said, Mr. Interpreter, not me. Your Honor, the, the only thing the interpreter can interpret for the defendant is what Your Honor is telling him. Sir, do you not understand the word probation? Yeah, I understand now. Okay, great. Are you on probation? Oh boy. Oh, he's still speaking. See. Si. Oh no. Yes. You're on it. No. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know if I don't know. He can't understand the interpreter, but he told me he's not on probation. No, no I'm not on probation. Only, Fantastic. Only I have the only problem. Muy bueno. The only issue that I have is the, my license. Okay. Um, Your Honor, for the record, I, I was interpreting exactly what Your Honor was saying. Apparently, know, the defendant does not understand the legal terminology. The, Mr. Interpreter, it's not your fault. Uh, we run into this with the word probation all the time. Certainly, Your Honor. I just, I just wanted to clarify that for the record. Thank you, Judge. All right. Sir, are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol? No. No. Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? No. No. And finally, sir, whether it applies to you or not, do you understand the idea that if you are not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea to a criminal charge would subject you to deportation? Do you understand that concept? See. Si. Yes. I will find that your plea is freely and voluntarily entered, that you have knowingly and willingly waived your right to have a trial, and you've had assistance of counsel with whom you say you're satisfied. I assume you're entering a plea of no contest. Is that correct? Si. Yes. I will accept your plea of no contest in each case. I'll withhold adjudication in each case. George, is this, are we doing time served or? Yes. All right, sir, I'm going to accept your plea. I'm going to withhold adjudication. I'm going to order you to serve three days in the Orange County Jail on 2021 CT 4534 AO. I will give you credit for the three days you've already done. Is to be released as to that case. In case number 2021 CT 7904 AO, I'll sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail. I'll give you credit for the two days you've already done. He is to be released, released as to that case. I'll order that you pay your court costs, your cost of prosecution, and public defender lien in each case. Uh, it's $351 per case, so $702 total. I give you one year to pay that, sir. Is that enough time? Let's see. Yes. Do you have any questions about the plea you entered today? No. No. If you wish to appeal that sentence, you have to do it in writing in 30 days. If you cannot afford an attorney for the appeal, one will be appointed for you. This will conclude the case, sir. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Interpreter. You're welcome, Your Honor. Have a good morning. You are the only participant. Is there some way I can adjust the volume on that guy? Okay. okay. <sighs> Mr. Lyons? All right, Mr. Lyons, uh, you're here on a DUI. Um, I don't know if it was on there, but typically it's a $500 bond. I'll grant you a $500 bond. Order that you have no alcohol, illegal drugs while out on release should you post that bond.
Yeah, I know. So you guys gave me one of these yesterday. Is this just to let let me know? Yeah, for each defendant who's on PTR, we get those over from um, pretrial release. And right, uh, but it's already it already got the detainer for it. Yeah, but those forms are for their supervising officer. Oh. So if you revoke it, then or if you don't revoke it, you. No, I'm going to revoke it because uh, there was alcohol involved. I looked at the affidavit on the battery. So any, well, all right. So on the DUI, which is twenty. Oh wait a minute, I don't have a case number. Twenty-two CP one one three. All right. So on twenty twenty-two CT one four nine AA, I will grant you a bond of five hundred dollars. Conditions of that bond, should you post it, are that you are to have no alcohol or illegal drugs. You'll be subject to random urinalysis. And in case number 2022-MM35AA, I will revoke PTR on that case. Um, and, sir, you're going to have to seek release on that case from the judge on that case. Your Honor, I would ask that if you consider doubling the bond as opposed to holding him at no bond. He, he, he's on PTR. I can't, you want me to double I mean, PTR? If you would set a bond, Your Honor. Oops, somebody's on the screen. <laughs> okay. Uh, Oh, man, come on. Okay. I tell you what, since Davis was, he ordered to have no alcohol uh, on the PTR that he was already out on. Because if not, I'm going to add it as a condition. And then you guys can do, can do the random UAs. Well, I guess you do them anyway. No, it was just no contact, no hostile contact with the victim, and no weapons were firing. All right. Um, then I'll leave him on PTR in 2022-MM35AA. I'm adding the condition that you have no alcohol, no drugs, to that pretrial release on the other case, and you will be subject to random urinalysis on both cases. All right. Um, who do we have on the? Good afternoon, Council. What case are you here on? I. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I represent John uh, Baran Tamala. How do you spell the last name? Uh, B e r o n t o m a l a. Oh, I got it. Oh, he's he's the next one up. Oh, no, he's right there? Yes, sir. Okay, well, that was good timing because they just brought your client out. Um, sir, can you put your name on the record? Uh, Gene Barone Tamala. No, no, I'm sorry. I was talking to your lawyer. <laughs> all right. uh, Tyrese Cruz, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Cruz, C-R-U-Z? Oh, I-S-E. Oh, okay. Like Tom. Yes, sir. I got you. All right. So um, this is case number 2022 CF1395AO. Uh, Mr. Cruz is with us on the virtual uh, WebEx, I guess, whatever we call it. And he's here on behalf of Mr. Barantamala. Uh, Mr. Barantamala, you have. Um, Bonds, you have three counts, four counts, excuse me, four counts. And on counts two, you have a $5,000 bond. On count three, you have a $2,500 bond. On count four, you have a $500 bond. I will stay those bonds 
So those will remain. You also are not entitled to a bond on count one as that charge is punishable by life. And I will stay at at zero bond. Therefore, you and your attorney are going to have to seek release if you wish to um, be released under count one from the judge on the case. Although I probably cut you off a little bit, didn't I, Mr. Cruz? Do you want to be heard on that? Uh, Your Honor, um, we'll seek release from um, the judge just hearing it. I understand that uh, based on the nature of the charge. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I apologize. I, I, I went right to it and I, <laughs> I didn't give you a chance to, to argue it. But, I, you know, under the statute, he's not entitled because of the nature of the charge. Um, and given the uh, allegations, I, I, I'm just going to ask you to... Um, file motions in the with the judge on the case absolutely your honor okay yes your honor all right uh sir good luck to you obviously you want to stay in touch with your lawyer your honor no contact oh, oh it, okay yeah, well you're right no you're absolutely right mr gene all right um in the event that you do get released sir uh and and post these other bonds that you have um, it will be under the condition that you have no contact whatsoever with uh, any of the alleged victims in the case. You also will possess no weapons, no firearms. Uh, I don't. There was no alcohol, drugs involved, were there? No, Your Honor. The or, only the only thing I would add, Your Honor, is you've stated upon release, even from the jail, there should be no contact. Say, um, I'm, uh, say it again. Your Honor, you stated upon his release, he is to have no contact. I would ask oh. that even from the jail, he should have no contact with the victim. All right. Any yeah, well, obviously. Okay. I, I think I said it wrong. You are to have no contact whatsoever with any alleged victim in this case, whether you're here or released. Is that clear? Okay. All right. Is that it? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Cruz, thank you for appearing, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. All right. All right. Good luck to you. Yeah, we have Mr. Rollins next. All right. You are the only participant. Mr. Rollins is here on a DUI. Rollins? Yeah. Okay. Keep on your own. Okay. We don't have Rollins. We have White. All right, Mr. White, you're here on, uh, because you failed to appear in case number 2020 CT 2114AO. However, the Capius did have a $1,500 bond on it. I will stay the bond at that amount. Um, it doesn't say what the underlying charges are. Are there any conditions you need or no? Um, on mine, it says it's a DUI with property damage. Okay. Is it a, but it's not a VOP. No, Your Honor. He just failed to appear. Yeah, okay. All right, well, that's fine. $1,500 bond. If you want to post it, you can. Is this Alan? Yes. All right. Um, I guess we're considering this a consensual encounter. Uh, sir, you... Uh, on case number 2022 at CF 1570AO, uh, count one, you have a bond of $15,150 on count two and $100 on count three. I will stay those bonds. All right. Good luck to you. Say again, sir. You have bonds of $15,000 on, on count one, $150 on count two, and $100 on count three. And I'm, staying, I'm leaving them at that amount. Okay. All right. Good luck to you. Is this Mr. Bright? Yes. All right. Um, Mr. Bright. This is case number 2022-CF-1568-AO. 1528 uh, On count one, 
I'm going to give you a bond of 150. I can't remember if I wrote these off the affidavit or these are my notes. Okay, so you have a bond of 150 on count one, 15,000 on count two, and 500 on count three. I will leave. It's 15,000. That was deodorizer foot powder. I don't know how I was charged with sales. Sir, sir, it sounds to me like you want to try the case. Unfortunately, it's, you can do that, just not today. Okay? And if you want to seek a modification of the bond, you speak to your lawyer about filing a motion for that. Your Honor, what you have listed as count three is actually another charge, the um, driving with licenses. Oh, it's a different case number. I'm sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, 20, you're right. So that's 20. Oh, you know what? The first one I had didn't have the other case number. The updated one this afternoon does. Okay. So that's actually 2022 CT 758 AO on the driving license suspended. Uh, but I, I mean, I'll leave it at 500. Yes, Your Honor. But you're right, it has its own case number. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you. And then you said. Sorry? Oh, you're going to leave? Is my bonds going to stay like this? Yeah. What about the deodorizer? You need to talk to your lawyer about that. Okay. Mr. Davis. All right, Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, uh, you're not entitled to a bond on this charge because it is a punishable by life. Therefore, if you want to seek release, you'll have to do that from the judge on your case. Okay? All right, good luck to you. Um, are these guys co-defendants? Dennis, I think he is. Yes, Your Honor. So I'd also, also ask for no contact with co-defendants, Your Honor. Yeah, oh, good point. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, while you're, the case is pending, you're to have no contact with your co-defendants, like Mr. Dennis there. Your Honor, can I also ask for a no return to Port, Point Orlando? Oh, sure. 9101 International Drive. No, re no return to the scene. Can I say it that way? Yeah, that's fine, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Mr. Dennis, uh, you are also charged with robbery with deadly weapon. It's a punishable by life. Therefore, you are not entitled to a bond. So you do not have a bond. You will have to seek release from the judge on the case. While this case is pending, you are to have no contact with any co-defendants. For instance, Mr. Davis there. Yeah. Um, also, you were out on 2021 CF 14784AO. I'm going to revoke the bond in that case. So you, if you want to be released, you'll have to seek release from the judges on both of those cases. All right. Are they keep suffering? All right. Lieutenant Mr. Davis keep suffering? Yes, they're to have no contact. Mr. Gordon, all right, Mr. Gordon, uh, this was a warrant, I think, and there's bonds of 4,000 on, oh, wait, first of all, the case number, because I never forget to say the case numbers, 2022 CF 7650, or, sorry, 765 AO. Count one, you have a bond of 4,000. Count two, you have a bond of 10,000. I will stay the bonds at those amounts. You were, was he out on bond? It says open case. I had an ROR, sir, but they... On 21 CF 8985 AO, you had an ROR? Yes, sir. They, uh... They filed a 33 and Right. But, Your Honor, can you take no action on that because they issued a KPS? Sure. A KPS no action. Arizona. No action. Okay. Stay your bonds on the new one, okay? Okay. Could I seek a bond protection later on? At a later yes. Time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you have a lawyer. Okay. The... Right. They can file a motion. Right. Uh, is this Mr. Hall? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this was, I think this was a warrant, right? And on the warrant, the judge. Okay, this is one where the ju the judge that signed the warrant gave a bond and PTR, but he doesn't qualify for PTR, so I can't. What do I do about that? Um, usually they'll strike it. They'll strike the PTR. Okay, so I'm going to strike PTR because he doesn't qualify and just leave the bond at 5000 Yeah. That sounds like a good thing. Uh, sorry, I'm homeless, and uh, this is for a warrant that I wasn't even aware of. I was never arrested. 
May you please uh, perhaps... Well, uh, sir, it, it, you were arrested after a judge reviewed a, an affidavit for an arrest warrant, decided there was probable cause, and issued a warrant uh, for your arrest. Yes. And asked for and indicated that the bond would be $5,000. i am not going to disturb that because that's what the judge decided. Okay. Um, he also, I think it was a he, might have been a she, he also wished that if you did post the bond, he wanted you out on pretrial re release in addition to the bond. However, you don't qualify for that. So I'm striking the PTR. I'm leaving the bond. Can you lower it to like 3000 something else? You can ask your lawyer to file a motion to lower it. Okay. All right, thank you. Ortiz? Bond it, Your Honor. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, Parazali? That's not Parazali. Because that's Suzanne. Are we waiving? Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to ask that she be screened for mental health pre-trial release. Okay. Well, first things first. Uh, it was 5000 on, well, this is case number 2022-CF154580. The warrant indicated a $5,000 bond on count one, $150 bond on three, uh, two, three, and four. Uh, I'll stay those bonds in the alternative, I guess, you screen her for mental health, and if she qualifies, she can be released under mental health? Yes, Your Honor. Does that say it the right way? Yes. All right, and Mr. Would, Sampson? Your Honor, I would ask for a no return. Oh, yeah, okay. No return to the scene. On That's on Parazale. I don't know how you say it. Is this Mr. Sampson? Yes, sir. Uh, possession of cannabis. Oh, 2022 CF 1574AO. Felony amount. Um, he says he wasn't interviewed, Ms. Davis. Any chance he's PTR eligible? Oh, this is Sampson. He qualifies, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Sampson, um, you have a bond. I think you have a bond of one thousand, or apparently you qualify for pretrial release. If you if you would rather be released under their supervision, I will release you under PTR. You don't have to um, post a bond, but you have to follow the rules. And one of the rules is going to be that you're to have no uh, illegal drugs or alcohol, and you'll be subject to random urinalysis to make sure you're not ingesting any of those illegal substances. So, and if you need a 30-day window to clean out, we'll do that. Yes, Your Honor, you would need a 30-day window, um, and you would like pre-trial release? Everybody and needs. And you would like pre-trial release, Your Honor. All right, pre-trial release it is. No drugs or alcohol, random UAs. 30 days, though. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> Mr. Self? Yes, sir. You're Mr. Self? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Self apparently failed to appear for trial back in 2011. Well, I, that's the case number. It might have been 2012. In any event, uh, sir, I am not going to grant a bond uh, because the warrant had no bond, and you are going to have to go see the judge about this old case. So stay, stay it at zero. Dang, I told everybody I could probably meet them up for lunch. I was wrong. Mr. Shirley, uh, I'm fine. Um, this is case number 2021-CF16204AO. I don't even understand my notes. Um, I put no contact, no weapons, no firearms, but I didn't say I was going to grant a bond. Do you have the affidavit? All right. Um, uh, I'll grant him a bond on count one, 
3,500, count two, 1,000. I am going to revoke What was he out on? Oh, revoke his bond on 2021 CF 7885AO. Your Honor, did you say um, on count one it was 35,000? 3,500. And 1,000 on count two. Uh, if he does, no contact with the alleged victim, no weapons, no firearms. Revoking on 2021 CF 7885A, revoke that bond. All right, good luck to you, sir. Mr. Tremblay. Uh, case number 2022 CF 15728 uh $2,000 bond on count one, 2000 on count two. Uh, I will stay those bonds. All right, good luck to you. Is that a good thing? I don't know. It depends on your perspective. I have stuff to sign and do. All right. Uh, is there anything left we need to do on the record? We good? Nothing from the state. All right. We're adjourned. Bond Court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos.